You are looking up at a million brain cells plugged into a computer. Researchers grew these neurons from stem cells in a petri dish placed on top of a microchip. With this fusion of neurons and silicon, electrical signals can be detected and delivered. And with a bit of digital stimulation, these lab-grown brain cells can play Pong, a vintage video game. We stimulated it using electrical activity. So the closer the ball gets to the paddle, the faster we stimulate it with a pulse. We showed that these neurons in a dish, if given the right stimulus and the right rewards and uh, right disincentives, were able to learn how to control the paddle to play the game. Startup firm Cortical Lab says its finding lays the foundation for smarter biological computers and it's set to commercialize a device that researchers can eventually use to study neurological diseases like epilepsy and dementia. We are creating a brain organoid, a mini brain that we can use for intelligence and also drug discovery uh, and personalized medicine. Cortical Labs has raised up to 15 million Singapore dollars in funding since it started in 2019. It partnered with experts from the UK and the US to build a compact system where researchers can study cells and create algorithms to train them. That device is set to be rolled out by year end and will cost up to 40,000 US dollars. Theoretically, you could build all sorts of applications, right? You know, we're building APIs around it so you can actually start developing applications that are connected to the internet. So we think that in a data center cabinet, we can actually have 40 units, and you know, that makes it a very scalable uh, solution. Organoid intelligence, which combines the power of brain cells and chips, is touted to be the next frontier in medicine. This means that lab-grown cells could be connected to sensors and trained through artificial intelligence. Organoids are three-dimensional tissue models that can be used for studying how a biological system may function. It is not the actual organ itself, but it does give us quite a lot of interesting opportunities for studying how the system may behave you know, without actually harming a real human or a live animal. The technology can be used to learn more about the body by analysing images, diagnose diseases and discover and develop new drugs. Researchers at the NTU Centre for Biomedical Informatics are studying how both organoids and AI could transform healthcare. In biomedical science and on clinical science, data is becoming increasingly large and complicated. There is an increasing demand for precision medicine or personalized medicine. There is also competing demands on how we can reduce healthcare costs and increase efficiency and, out and beneficial outcomes as well. Combined with organoid technology, AI helps researchers fast-track their understanding of cells and diseases. You do need advanced technologies in order to make sense of all this information. And I think this is where AI can be extremely powerful. To bring a potential drug out for Parkinson's disease, it could take anywhere between 5 to 10 years, which is a very long time of development. However, when you are using an organoid-based models, you can see an immediate response you know, within a few months. Right? So this greatly cuts down the amount of time needed to see an impact. And it also greatly increases the turnover, especially when you're trying to assay and test out potential drug targets. Uh, this decrease or reduction in the amount of waiting time right, can also be very cost-saving and also time-saving as well. Despite their transformative potential, there are ethical and regulatory concerns about using organoid technology and AI. The intention is always good, but I think some degree of regulation can help us in making sure we do not venture too far out. And I think that, that can be really important because uh, without, without any bricks put in place, right, you know, we, we may find ourselves into a situation where the consequences could be very severe. 
in the AI space, there is a potential for great benefit, but uh, we should also look out for areas right, where there could be avenues of potential for great harm as well. What are the outcomes that come from it? What is the uh, good that can be had from this technology? And is it enough to offset potential misuse of the technology? And this is a conversation that needs to be had with society. So, so what we have here is a prototype. For now, Cortical Labs has the challenge of simplifying its technology and making it accessible to biotech firms and cloud providers. It's already working on the next version of the product. The investors that we've attracted are hardcore sci-fi believers. They, they believe in a future that is radically different from where, what we have today. If we succeeded in scaling this technology up and having it adopted, would result in truly radically different uh, futures, right? We, we wouldn't be doing what they call the step change in, in technology, but it would be a, a truly quantum shift in the way that we uh, do artificial intelligence.